Hello and welcome to this Corgi Engine tutorial. I'm Renault and today I'm going to talk to you about collisions in the Corgi Engine. Um, the Corgi Engine was created as an alternative to physics-based platformers, uh, aiming to provide a tighter gameplay and more predictable physics. To do so, the engine implements its own physics. It's different from Unity physics. So uh, that, that means that the engine has its own collision detection, its own uh, movement methods, and so on. Uh, the Corgi controller is at the heart of this system. So uh, let's just stop this video here and have a look at this one. I just so what I did is I, I dragged a character prefab inside the scene. So we can see that it has a number of classes. Most of them are character abilities. There's a specific tutorial uh, for that. But uh, let's focus on the Corgi controller. So to handle collisions, uh, the Corgi controller creates raycasts. Raycasts are these tiny lines that you see here. Um, as you can see, if I if I move around, uh, and I'll just do so, um, we see that uh, these lines they follow the character. They move. If I if I crouch, uh, they change size and what they do, uh, think of them as like magic lasers uh, that are cast every frame in all directions around the character. And when these lines touch a surface that is identified in the engine as an obstacle, so for example a platform, but it could also be a moving platform, stuff like that, uh, it will react. So for example here, I'm, I'm walking towards uh, this wall here and as you can see these red um, Raycast well this red Raycast the first that touches the platform uh, Detects that it's a wall that it's uh, too, too steep uh, to climb It's not a slope. It's really a wall and uh, I shouldn't be able to move um, further so uh, the Raycasts are calculated based on uh, the box collider 2d and this is kind of hard to see on on this character but it's uh the green line that you have here and uh if i if i move there you see that's the green rectangle that's the box collider 2d so uh let's see how in the corgi engine uh platforms are defined you can see in your corgi control inspector you will have collision masks so uh here it says that the platform mask must be platforms and it says that the moving platform mass must be moving platform. So what, what does it all mean? Uh, well, first, let's have a look at an example platform. So uh, let's take this one. Uh, we can see that it has a box collider 2D, which is um, the size of the platform. And it has a layer saying it's a platform. So these are the only two mandatory things you need to create a platform. So uh, if I just go into my my sprites here and find one that could suit me, uh, no, this won't do. Uh, what do I have here? Yeah, maybe this. So uh, I'll just you know import the health bar uh, into the scene. So I just drag and drop my sprite here. It creates an object with a transform and a sprite renderer. All I need to do now is add uh, or select a layer for it, uh, saying it's a platform. I'm really bad at it. Yeah, here it is. And I just add a component uh, saying it's a box collider 2D. By default, uh, the box collider 2D will um, take the shape of the sprite, so uh, we don't have much tweaking to do. But of course, we could be uh, able to change the the x value, for example. Uh, of its size and so if I press play uh, there's nothing much to it I I can directly you know climb above it uh, it will be detected as a platform uh, it has uh, bounce so if I'm close to the edge my character will dangle and there you go you've created a, a platform but yeah maybe you want to create uh, a different kind of platform so maybe you want it to be a one-way platform uh, meaning a platform that you can uh, jump from underneath. So uh, if you go back to your layer drop down here and select 
um, one way platform you press play and again as simple as that you get a platform you can uh, jump on it you can jump down from it and you can uh, jump from down on top of it and you know maybe you're not happy with it and you want it to move so uh, to do that it's really simple again you just have to uh, go to the layer here and select moving platforms instead of uh, one-way platform and you just add a moving platform component to it um, by default you can you can leave it uh, like that the only thing you'll want to change obviously is the path elements so that's the points uh, by which your moving platform will uh, will move so uh, for example I want to create a moving platform that goes in uh, in three directions uh, so I'll just put it free here and then I can just you know drag and move these points around uh, and that will be the uh, the path that my platform will take so if I just press play you'll see that I can uh, move my character and jump on top of the moving platform and it goes 0 1 2 one zero etc etc um, there are a bunch of options I can set for example I can uh, as you as you've seen this one goes back and forth so it goes this way and this way uh, but I can make it a loop um, and in that case uh, it will you know what I'll just increase the speed because it's really really slow uh, it will be much easier all right so as you can see now I have this platform that is looping in an ascending way so it goes 0 1 2 0 1 2 but I can also make it move uh, the other way around so uh, it goes 0 2 1 2 1 0 2 1 0 etc um, I can decide to add points so uh, for example here I've just added two more points and really it's just a matter of, of dragging points around uh, you can also change uh, the points directly here in the uh, and it, it's it, it's in real time too uh, which is really nice so uh, you can decide that you have another script that moves you know these points around maybe when you activate a switch uh, you know you have your moving platform that will go in in one direction or the other uh, you can also change the actual acceleration type so Right now I have a uh, constant speed, so uh, my platform will go to there, 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 at the same speed. But I can also have an ease out, uh, which means that it will uh, kind of slow down every time it uh, reaches a, a point in its path. And I can also create my own animation curve, uh, which is always really fun. So uh, that defines, you know, the speed at which uh, the platform travels so uh, for example with this weird shape you see that I have this sort of um, cut movement you know it, it, it goes in a, a weird way um, obviously that's not really practical but you know it just just works uh, and and of course your character will stick to it um, anything anything you do is supported uh, you can also define a, a minimum uh, distance to go, which is used to check if we've reached a point in the path, depending on your speed and so on. That might be something you want to tweak. And the last thing is you can define the way it's activated. By default, as you've seen, uh, it moves on its own. But if I just check that box, uh, it will wait for me to step on it and then move. So while we're on the topic of layers, um, You've seen that the, the asset comes with a list that is already filled. There's some uh, stuff that is not even used. Uh, I think it's a legacy from, from Unity. Um, then you have uh, the platforms. That's where all your platforms need to be. One-way platforms for one-way platforms, moving platforms. You can also have moving one-way platforms, uh, which as the name implies are moving platforms that you can uh, jump down from. Uh, so. If I change that one uh, to a moving one-way platform and press play, if I step on it, I can jump down from it and I can jump from underneath it. Uh, but it's still a moving platform. Could be useful. Uh, and there are a bunch of others. 
Uh, most of them are quite uh, self-explanatory. So you have the water, you have the UI, uh, the player, uh, which can be used. Well, you need to put that uh, layer for all your playable uh, characters. Then you have projectiles, stuff like that. Uh, it's really, really simple. And the, the last thing are the tags. Um, the engine prior to version 3.0 used to rely on tags to identify stuff. Uh, it kind of got messy, uh, so I got rid of them. Uh, you can still use them if you want uh, to identify objects. It's a, it's a good way to find objects in a scene. I just don't use them anymore, but feel free to do so. Um, I hope you now know more about collisions in the engine and how to set up platforms. Um, that's, that's all I had to say about collisions. Have a good day. Bye.